So although the situation in Afghanistan continues to dominate headlines out of Washington, D.C., there is a race right now behind the scenes that would effectively alter America from its roots in rugged individualism to big government and cradle to grave financial assistance. But this isn't really simply a battle between two political parties. There's a lot of nuances that are going on that, in fact, might actually save the day. Joining me now, Republican Senator Bill Haggerty of Tennessee. And Senator, so the week began when your former colleague Heidi Heitkamp came out strongly against many of the taxes her party is pushing to fund this $3.5 trillion spending package. I thought that was remarkable. What are, your, what are your thoughts about that? I think it shows the Democratic Party is having a very difficult time with itself. Their leadership uh, with Joe Biden has lost all political capital given the disaster in Afghanistan. And I think they really are questioning their own viability. And the notion that when we're coming out of a pandemic and trying to deal with the recovery economy, that they would come in and put crushing taxes on job creators, that they would tax capital growth. All of the things that they're proposing would have such a negative impact on our economy at a time when we need to be recovering. Uh, I think that they're going to have a very difficult time moving forward and coming to consensus. In the meantime, there's a report the White House is withdrawing or will withdraw to nominate ahead the ATF. Uh, uh, this in the face of bipartisan pushback over his gun control advocacy. Again, this is, is, is how important is it that, at least in D.C., there's a, an acknowledgment, A, of the my party that's in the minority and their voters and also perhaps the Constitution? Well, I, I see this less as an acknowledgment of the minority party because Biden has not been, you know, the unity president that he advertised himself to be. I think what it is is the fact that Biden, again, has lost all political capital. And the White House is not in a position to push back on folks like Angus King people that caucus with the Democrats, they don't have the votes on the Democrat side to get Chipman through. It's as simple as that. Wow. So, uh, so, so hold your horses. Uh, nothing, there, nothing relevant there with respect to uh, maybe the kind of respect that people would love to see out of Washington, D.C., all Americans yes. to, for a better nation. Yeah. Well, it's hey, a win I, for know, the Second your, Amendment. Your no resume, question about that. Yeah, your resume is just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, just I don't know if people know you were an ambassador to Japan, you Boston Consulting, on the board of New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ company. So I want to kind of lean on that. You just wrapped up your economic development tour. You ended it in your hometown of uh, Gallatin, uh, Tennessee. What do you have to report to the nation from this tour? Well, what I'm hearing from employers around my state, and I'm sure it's the case across the nation, is that they feel like they've been competing against the federal government, Charles, to get people to come back to work. There's a huge issue with getting folks back to work right now that's causing shortages around the country. There's another very big issue as well. That's inflation. And while the Biden administration might try to argue that this inflation is transitory, indeed, there are huge inflation to inflationary momentum in the economy right now. If you look at what's happened since Biden took office, gas prices are up 40 to 50 percent. Every good that we buy here in America has got to be transported. Home prices right here in my home state of Tennessee, housing prices have gone up 15 to 20 percent year over year. That rolls right into rental cost. I mean, this is inherently inflationary. Right. It's not temporary. There are some supply chain dislocations, I'll grant that, that will have sure. an inflationary impact. But I think we're going to wind up far overshooting the 2% Fed target. We've got a real problem on our hands. And the Democrats are talking about shoving even more stimulus money into the economy at this point. That's the absolute wrong position to be taken right now. Yeah, and, and it's so ironic because uh, the most inflationary areas are those that politicians always say that households stay up at the kitchen table going over the mm -hmm. household bills. Those are the things that have gone up the most and that are crippling right now, to your point. Senator yeah, exactly Haggerty, right. thank you very much. Always appreciate it. Thank you, Charles.